YouTube, what's going on? It's Juan Gotti here with another video, and I knew that this was going to happen. I knew since the news broke yesterday, this was already going to happen. All 32 teams, all 32 fan bases was going to go crazy, and for every content creator, for every NFL team, they were going to be asked this question. So I knew this news was going to happen uh, since the news broke. So YouTube, what's going on? It's Juan Gotti here with another video. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about the dawning question that every NFL fan base has, but more specifically for our team, Washington Redskins, we're going to talk about it here today. So without further ado, let's get straight into today's video. But before we do, make sure you guys go down below, leave a like on this video, subscribe if you're new, and turn on post notifications so you can notify when I upload a video about the NFL, in this case, our Washington Redskins. Let's get straight into today's video. So, the question that I'm pretty sure every fan base has in NFL is, should their respective teams, or in this case, should our Washington Redskins um, trade for best safety in all of football, in my opinion, Jamal Adams? Jamal Adams. And I'm going to be giving you guys my answer here today. So, my answer to that is going to be simply a uh, yes. Obviously, it's going to be yes. Why would I say no? Like, come on now. Is it going to happen? No. I mean, he did come out with a list. The seven teams that he would like to go to. And the Washington Redskins weren't on that list. Quite frankly, every team on that list were Super Bowl contenders. So, how likely is it that he gets traded to the Washington Redskins? It's not likely at all. I mean, for one, we're not on the list of the teams that he'd like to be traded to. And two, why would he leave a busted franchise, a busted organization, in the Jets to come to another busted organization? Now, I know you can say this. Well, our, our, our franchise isn't busted anymore. We actually have a respected front office somewhere, and we have a, a respected coaching staff. Yeah, but Jamal Adams doesn't know that. He may see it here and there on timelines, on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, whatever you have. He may see it, but he doesn't know actually what's going on in the Redskins front office and or team. So he might look at it as still being the same Washington Redskins from previous years under the, the old regime. So he's like, why would I leave another franchise that has been, you know, poorly ran uh, by Joe Douglas and those guys in New York? And to come to a team that's been poorly ran by Dan Snyder and those guys. So he wants to contend for a Super Bowl. And quite frankly, he deserves to. He deserves to. His career has been wasted here um, in New York. Well, not here, but in New York. Yes, they have, you know, some pieces on defense as far as Jamal Adams, um, um, what is his name, C.J. Mosley. They have some, They have a nice front seven, Quentin Williams. They have a nice, you know, defense. But his career has been wasted. Jamal Adams deserves to be on a team that's going to be competing for a Super Bowl. And he did say whatever team he gets traded to, if he does get traded, he will not immediately ask for a contract extension. Contract extension. Now, he did say this. He says Patrick Mahomes is about to get $40 million to $60 million a year. He said, that's my guy. Well deserved. But if I was about to get $40 to $60 million a year, I will, you wouldn't hear a peep out of me. So all he wants to do is get paid. And I know it's not as simple as it sounds, but it's just like, why not take care of your 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 all pro safety? Three years in the NFL and he's already been to a ton of Super Bowl. I mean, or Pro Bowl rather. Best safety in all of football, in my opinion. Play the box, could drop back in coverage and play. Uh, check your slide receiver. You're running back out the backfield. Your tight end can also play a little bit of the edge. So with that being said, I'm pretty sure Jamal Adams should be on all 32 teams' um, radar. But more specifically for the Washington Redskins, I don't see it happening. I don't see it happening. He wants to contend for a Super Bowl, and maybe in, in two to one, maybe one to two years, three at the max, the Redskins should be um, competing for a Super Bowl. But as of right now, this year, where he wants to get traded, I don't see him being on the Redskins' radar because it's just like, you know, he can come out with a list all he wants, but then again, he got to look at it like this. You're asking for a trade. You're asking for a trade where you have two years left on your contract, so New York doesn't have to bodge at all. They can look at that and say, oh, you want to get traded? Okay. That don't mean they have to trade him. He's still under contract for two years. He's required to show up to practice, games, whatever. He can hold it out, but he'll be missing up. He'll be missing on a lot of money. He'll be missing on a lot of money. So it's just like, you you know, New York has this, this, this leverage on Jamal Adams. Yes, he requested a trade. But it's two years left on your contract, so they don't have to budge at all. You can you can threaten to hold out, 
But once again, that's just that's just helping out. Uh, I would say New York because they're gonna fine you for not showing up. I mean, and then you're not gonna be kicking getting no money. Like the Trent Williams situation, he sat out and he was messing up on a ton of money. And I'm pretty sure Jamal Adams has a ton of money. But if you want to get more money and have your own new contract, be a be a G about it. Be a G about it. Be about your business. You know, you can request a trade, but show up to work. Show up to work. Take care of business. Just show up there. You don't have to be all buddy buddy with the team and the front office because we know how poorly they've treated you in a way that you possibly have said. You came out and said that they treated you in a way. So you don't have to be buddy buddy with them. Just show up to work, be about your business, go home. These two years will fly by fast, and before you know, you'll be a free agency. But with you holding out, it's just making things worse. It's gonna it's gonna make your since you have two years left on your contract, it's gonna make your value decrease. So therefore, the Jets won't be getting as much compensation as they could possibly get, um, you know, because I will require a first round or maybe even two first round picks for Jamal Adams because he's young and he's one of the best safeties, if not the best safety in all of football. But with you holding out, your compensation could get, you know, decreased by the years going on. So what I mean by that is if you trade him now, you get two first round picks possibly at the, at the least, in my opinion, two first round picks at the least. And then on top of that, you probably can get another pick or a player. But if you hold out, you know, as the years progress, your compensation is going to go down. Just like how Trent Williams. If we would have traded him at the beginning of the last year, the, the, the uh, 49ers were asking to give us two first-round picks, and we wouldn't even pick up the phone. So with that being said, for the, for the Jets' sake, they better trade him now when they can get the most compensation out of him as they could. Because if, he just, if you don't trade him and you want to be, you know, petty about it, how similar to the Washington Redskins did with Trent Williams. We were petty about it, and we didn't trade him when he first asked to be traded. If you want to be petty about it, that's only hurting you in the long run because his compensation is going to go down. And Jamal Adams is still going to be a good player. I mean, he's not even, I think he's going to be, by the time 2021, 2022 comes around, he's going to be 24, 25, 26, around there. So he's still going to be young and in his prime. So with that being said, it's hurting the Jets, and it's also hurting Jamal Adams because Jamal Adams is going to be, if he holds out for these next two years, it's going to have teams like, whoa, is he in football shape? And, and you know, everyone could train, but uh, is he still in football shape? Is he still the Jemaitis that we know and love? So they got to get something done here where it's going to be the best for both situations because, I mean, I think the bridges is already burned. They already burned the bridges. So with that being said, they have to get something done, you know, immediately for both sides to be satisfied. Because if you hold out longer... It's just affecting both sides. And it's more affecting the Jets. Because, you know, other teams that would trade for Jamal Adams later, probably two years from now, or even a year from now, could say, how do we know that he's still worth a first round pick? He held he held out last year. Now I don't think he I didn't think he I didn't see anything about him holding out, but I'm just assuming that he is gonna hold out since he's not getting a new contract and he requests to be traded. So with him, you know, possibly holding out this year and then the next year's free agency come or trading, you know, Dale, whatever you want to say, comes and a team wants to trade for Jamal Adams, they have now had the leverage on the Jets because they didn't trade him when he first asked it to, and he they could have got the most compensation. Now the other team could say, he held, he held it out this previous year. How do we know that he's still in football shape? So that therefore his decrease, you see what I'm saying? Now his uh compensation or the Jets' compensation would decrease for the for the um Jamal Adams. So they got to trade him now for when he's when he's going to have his best conversation. Now, for my Washington Redskins, should the Washington Redskins trade for Jamal Adams? Of course they should. Of course they should. Now, how likely is it? It's not likely at all. Like I said, seven teams on this list, the Washington Redskins weren't one of them. Now, unfortunately for us, the Eagles and the Dallas Cowboys were on that team or on that list of seven teams, and Dallas was probably the number one team. And unfortunately, I'm, I'm, I'm scared to break it to you guys or I'm sad to break it to you guys that – but Redskins family nation, he will be going to Dallas. I think he will. He wants to go to Dallas, and Dallas is the number one option. We know how Dallas be geeking to pursue talent like this. But, I mean, I know you can say on the bright side for the Washington Redskins and the rest of the NFC East is that it's going to put them more in a cap space, um, you know, situation where they can't pay their quarterback or whoever else they got to pay. That's going to help us in the long run. But the, the short impact that it's going to have on the Dallas Cowboys is major.
They they already have a fire offense. We're adding CeeDee Lamb on the offseason and, and, you know, having Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup, and all those guys. And Ezekiel Elliott, one of the best football running backs in all of football, if not the best running back in all of football. Uh, that offense is loaded. Now, if you add, now if you just add Jamal Adams to that weak secondary that they had, you know, uh, they have a Wujie back there. I think they still have Jeff Heath. I could be mistaken. But, uh, you know, add Jamal Adams back there, give their secondary a boost. Yeah, you have Trayvon Diggs back there now that they just drafted. So that's just going to make the Dallas Cowboys even more scarier. So with that being said, I think that he will be landing in Dallas. I think he will be landing in Dallas, unfortunately. Um, if he go, I pray every night that he doesn't go to Dallas. But I just think that he will because he wants to play for Dallas. And there will no Dallas be pressed to get players like this. So I want the Washington Redskins to pursue him. It's not going to happen. It's not likely. I don't think Ron Rivera is going to budge because, I mean, it has been talks about saying that he is a, you know, a, a dysfunctional in the locker room. But we don't know how true that is. We don't know how true that is. And I kind of, you know, feel for Joe Douglas because I, I thought that he was, you know, you know, handling the situation right. Handling the situation right just for the simple fact that it's just like the Quinn Dunbar situation for the Washington Redskins. We were not saying that we're not going to pay you, but right now isn't just the moment. Right now isn't the right time to pay you. So, just like Quentin Dunbar, Jamal Adams is somewhat impatient in a way. Impatient in a way. If he just stay down, they're not saying that they weren't going to pay him, but he just wants it now. He wants it on Jamal Adams' time. He don't care about what else the Jazz got to take care of, who else they got to sign, Whatever, whatever else they got to do as far as the franchise and a financial standpoint. He just want his money, and he wants his new contract. He doesn't care about anybody else. So similar to Quentin Dunbar, he's impatient. So now for the Washington Redskins before we get out of here, what would you give up for, uh, you know, Jamal Adams? I'm assuming that's what you're asking me. Well, what I give up is two first rounds. I know you're saying I'm crazy. Probably a first round and a second in Ryan Anderson, mod possibly. But you gotta understand, Jamal Adams is a top three, a top, uh, a top safety in the league, possibly the best. Like I keep referring to, you're gonna give up a lot of a lot of conversation for this guy if you trade him. If you trade for him now, not saying the Washington Redskins would do it because I doubt they will. And we're not even on his radar. And that's one thing he gotta get. He gotta get through his head is that you can write this list all you want. But you're not in free agency. You're asking to be traded. So they can trade you to wherever team they, they're feeling like gives them the best compensa the compensation for you. So it's not like free agency. I mean, now then you could pull an Antonio Brown situation where you get traded to a certain, uh, that team and then you hold out and then force them to trade you. Like how he got traded to the Bills. Then you know how that played out. He went got traded back to Oakland, I think. You know he got traded to Oakland. So you know how that situation went. So he can get, that can happen, but that's just going to make him you know seem more of an a-hole. So, with that being said, you can write this list, Jamal Adams, but it's up to, at the end of the day, it's up to the Jets to trade you wherever they want. So, they can trade you to Jacksonville and make you feel miserable all, all they want. So, Jamal Adams, Washington Redskins, not going to happen. I doubt it happens. But, if it do, and if, and if you're saying what's a realistic uh, trade trading option, I'll give you two options. Two first rounds, possibly a player. For Jamal Adams, or even a first and a third, and Ryan Anderson for Jamal Adams. But then again, you never know, cause like I keep referring to in my last thing that I did last night, that you gotta think about it like this: the Texans traded the DeAndre Hopkins for a fifth round pick and David Johnson. So you never know. Trades these days are crazy. So you never know what the compensation will be for the team that's giving up a certain player. So with that being said, it's me, Boy One Gotti. Like, comment, subscribe, hello to the Redskins, and turn on post notifications so you can notify when I upload a video about the NFL, or in this case, I'll watch the Redskins. Once again, Jamal Adams possibly being traded to the Redskins. Not likely. I doubt it happens. It won't happen. Peace.